This is Julia with iCadenza, and I'm here with Charles Castronovo, who is a wonderful tenor, and I am so excited to be here with you. Oh, thank you. It's a pleasure for me. Pleasure is all mine. You are actually singing, you are starring in Los Angeles Opera's production of Il Postino. That's right. By, by, by Danielle Catan. And that's it's a, such an exciting production. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, it's well, it's a world premiere, so, you know, it's never been done, of course. Um, it's based on the book, which is... Um, actually made into a movie, a famous movie, uh, Italian film, and uh, now it's the opera. But uh, it's actually in Spanish, it's not in Italian like the movie, because uh, it's kind of based more on the book. Well, it's kind of mixed, actually, with the book and, and the uh, the film, but it is in Spanish. Uh, Daniel Catan is, uh, is a Mexican uh, composer, also American composer, but uh, um, he decided to do it in Spanish. And I'm actually glad because it, it really works with the poetry of Pablo Neruda, which is a big part of the story. You know, it, it really works in Spanish, yeah. Let's talk a little bit about your roots in starting starting to sing and um, starting to, to work on performing. I know that you grew up here in Los Angeles and uh, got your start at San Francisco Opera's Marilla program. Can mm -hmm. you talk a little bit about what motivated you to, to first start singing? When I started singing, it actually was in a rock band first <laughs> uh, yeah. in high school. Yeah, I loved like, you know, classic rock, like the Beatles and, uh, you know, Led Zeppelin and all, all the classic rock. So um, basically, I was playing my guitar during lunch. I I think it was my freshman year of high school or maybe sophomore year of high school I can't remember now and I was just singing some Beatles songs or something with a friend of mine and uh, the choir teacher walked by and uh, she was a uh, really nice lady very clever lady also and she said oh you you know you have a nice voice why don't you join choir you know and of course you know being in a rock band I, I thought that that was ridiculous I didn't want to join choir you know but like I said she was very clever she said no actually you know you should think about it because um in choir, there's about 50 girls and about five boys. Mm -hmm. So I think a you know a little light bulb went off in my head. I said, yeah, you know, I'll just try it just for fun and see what happens. <laughs> but actually, I really liked it. Once I got in, you know, I like singing the harmony. And then we were doing some classical music like Handel's Messiah and different things like that. So as soon as I heard classical music, um, you know, it, it definitely spoke to me. But it wasn't really until um, my senior year of high school um, that I heard opera. And actually, it was the first thing I actually really heard was uh, the entrance of, of Otello mm -hmm. with uh, Placido Domingo singing it. So, of course, as soon as I heard that, I said, whoa, that's what I want to do, you know. Not necessarily Otello, but that, that kind of virile, beautiful, incredible sound, you know. Um, so I basically took the CD home full of tenor arias and tried to mimic, you know, and that's what I did in my bedroom, you know, just try to mimic all these tenors. And, um, yeah, to make a long story short, I went to college for a couple of years uh, to study music, but uh, I hated school. School for me was very boring and very slow. Um, and so and I did all my studying by myself. I, uh, I was known to constantly walk around with a score in my hand and with my headphones on with the recording playing of the opera, you know, and that's how I learned all of, of my operas. Now I don't usually have to learn anything except maybe memorize some words every time I do a new role because I already know the operas. I, I, I heard them and looked at them so many times. So yeah, and um, after that, actually, when I really started was at L.A. Opera, actually, because I was a resident artist there. And I did a bunch of small roles for a couple years. During that time is when I went to Marilla. And then I went to the Met program for two years, also um, uh, doing small roles and, you know, coachings and everything like that. And by that time, I started to make my professional debuts and, you know, singing Don Ottavio and Fenton, you know, in regional houses in, in America. And then I went to Europe and... All of a sudden, I'm never home. <laughs> yeah. So having performed at some of the most preeminent houses in the world, what, is there anything that still scares you? Yeah, sure. I mean, you know, you get nervous, of course. You know, what happens is as your career progresses and hopefully it's always going in the right direction, you do more important things. You don't, you don't get less nervous. Actually, in a way, you get more nervous because it's more important. But I think the main difference is, is you have more experience and you know how to deal with those nerves. Uh, I went through my time period where I felt kind of scared about everything. You know, every time I was performing, I was a little bit too nervous. I was forgetting that I actually love to sing. But, you know, that's, I think, a time period that a lot of singers go through. I got through it. And, uh, of course, there's hard times and or more scary times than others. But in general, I'm always 
enjoying myself nowadays. So. What drives you as you progress through this career? What, what do you find the most exciting about it? Um, well, my goal used to be that I would sing in every great opera house in the world. I can't say check. I've hit, well, almost, <laughs> almost check. Yeah, almost check. There's a few places I haven't been yet, um, but we'll take care of that right away. And um, so it's not so much about that anymore. Now it's more about kind of um, just, I don't even want to use the word perfecting because it's impossible as a singer to perfect your art. But definitely I want to, you know, just keep, progressing and uh, raise my level all the time. You know, I, I, f I feel happy, but I, I still have fire in the belly. And the main thing is, is that I keep that, you know, and that's what makes me continue in the right direction. You know, the main goal now for me is uh, I would like to record more. I have done some recordings, but I haven't done a solo recording yet. Uh, so that's something that's in the works, and I have a good feeling. It could be sometime soon, but in what way and what place, I don't know yet. But mm, it's coming. That's great. Yeah. Are you hard on yourself generally? Yes, actually I am. Um, when I hear myself on a recording or something, you know, I'm very critical of myself. But um, I know when to pat myself on the back too, you know. Um, otherwise, you know, it's not fun anymore. If I am feeling stressed or down on myself, you know, I, I take it a little bit and then try to think of some positive things and get back into the zone, you know. But it's a normal part of it, you know. You get down on yourself sometimes. But it just means you care. So that's good. <laughs> that's always good. Yeah. How do you get into the zone when you're about to perform? What do you do before a performance? Well, for me, I don't do anything too strange or too special. I mean, you know, I have my normal meal two, three hours before the show. Uh, I take it easy. I try maybe not to talk too much. I I'm not one of those people who needs complete silence or anything like that. Um, usually I listen to some music that's not opera. You know, I, I listen to my rock and roll or with the Beatles or whatever I want to listen to. And that usually helps me just keep my mind in a neutral place and not just thinking about the performance. Because by that point, you know, you've done the work. So it's just a matter of getting out there and, and you know, and showing everyone. So I don't want to think about it too much. You know what I mean? So for me, it's it's very simple. I, I do my little warm up. I drink some tea, have a good meal before. And that's it. That's what helps me get in the zone. Do you still play rock and roll sometimes? Oh yeah, I always have my guitar with me, and you know, if um, if I feel like something different, I'll just play my Beatles song still. <laughs> no, no problem. <laughs> I should have brought my guitar today. I would have showed you. That's true. That's true. Next <laughs> okay, time. next time. Next, next time. time. <laughs> yeah. um, so I know you you have a wife, and you actually have a child. Mm -hmm, How right. do you manage to balance that with an active career? Like you said, you're never home. Yeah. Except for right now. Yeah. yeah exactly. Uh, yeah. I'm right now. I'm home. Of course, working, which is a rare thing. But I tell you, um, it is hard. It is hard. And I think any singer would say the same thing. My wife's a singer also. And so, um, you know, for example, right now she's in Paris. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's always, it's always hard to keep the balance between working hard, pursuing what you're you know, what you want to do, and at the same time, keeping the family balance going. Uh, my son's three years and four months, so, you know, he's right in the middle of of everything, you know, which is great. He's, um, I mean, he travels with us, but if you ask me what, what are we going to do when he goes to school, then I'll tell you I don't know yet. My problem is that I am ambitious and I am looking forward to doing a lot of things, so I have to catch myself sometimes that you don't just accept everything that comes along. You know, you ha it's hard to plan in this career because people ask you, um, like right now, people who ask you in 2013, and that seems great. You know, there's job security, you're happy, people are asking you, but um, before you know it, all of a sudden, a few months later, you realize that your whole year's taken up and you didn't leave any time aside to, I don't know, go on a vacation. And, uh, you know, try to just keep figuring it out. That's it. Yeah. What would you recommend to a young young singer who is looking to follow in your footsteps? What are some of the best things that you did for yourself? Uh, well, that, that's a good question. At, at early stage, I would say the best thing that helped me, uh, besides, you know, obviously practicing a lot and going to your lessons and all that, the best thing that helped me was listening. Uh, and, uh, of course, I had my favorites. You know, I, I listened to Domingo a lot, and, and I listened to uh, Di Stefano and all that stuff. But I never made it a habit to listen just to one or two 
tenors, you know. I have a huge collection of tenors, even some that you might have not heard of, and some that you might say, mm, I'm not so excited about it. But I collected it anyway, because I really wanted to get as much input as possible of how the tenor sings in every fach, you know, from the lightest tenor to the heaviest tenor to whatever, ugly voice, gorgeous voice, loud voice, soft voice, I don't care, I just listen to them all. And, um, you know, I, I guess what I would do is try to take what I like from each one of them, you know. And you can't copy another voice, it's impossible, you know, because every voice is so individual. Um, but when you listen to that many tenors, um, you find that it's impossible to copy anyone. You, you, in a way, find your own voice because you soak in what you, what you like, what you feel, and, uh, and then you come out with what's your own. So for me, I would say, especially at an early stage, that would be the most important thing to do, in my opinion, in mm -hmm. my opinion. Second off, just learning, you know, the repertoire, and I don't mean just your own, like, I could probably, well, I might be a little rusty now, but I could probably sing you every line of Otello right now. Of course, I knew I would never sing Otello, I, mean, I never will, but this is invaluable because you start to realize what the style is of, you know, different I mean, different eras, different types of operas. You you learn the style, and it, it starts to soak in after a while. So, you know, and when you're singing whatever, Nemorino, and, you know, and you're singing uh, something Bel Canto or something, you, there's always a chance or two you might be able to throw in a little spice from something that, you know, stylistically maybe is not at the exact right time, but brings a little individuality, and I, I think that's incredibly important, which ties into listening. I want to point out your podcast that you have, that you've been doing some, such wonderful work oh, interviewing your colleagues. Can you talk about the idea behind that and the, and the, uh, the reason for doing that? Yeah, well, um, I just came up with this idea one day. Um, you know, just I was traveling, probably sitting there by myself in some <laughs> hotel. And I thought, you know, I meet so many interesting people um, when I'm traveling, you know, colleagues, uh, other singers, of, of course, mostly, um, but directors and uh, conductors and everything i thought you know why don't i actually interview them because i found that i uh, you know would have really nice um connections with a lot of other singers and and i thought you know i can probably maybe reach them or connect with them in a way that you know a normal person couldn't you know and especially in an interview a lot of times people in interviews are either way too open which is kind of awkward or they're they don't they're not really themselves mm -hmm. so so i thought it could be a different angle um something that people might appreciate just because it's more informal and i i always thought that it needs to be very informal and very relaxed um and so i came up with the idea and i thought you know when i'm traveling i brought the camera and it's you know you can see from episode one to well i think i'm only on episode four or something um you can see the progression from my little camera till i got a little bit better camera i edited it um in some photos as we go along and try to make it a little bit better and stuff so it's a work in pro progress but um most of the feedback that i got on it was really positive and uh they say well you know you have such a rapport with the, with the other singers and i think that was the main point of it you know mm -hmm. that uh, we have that connection that an, another person from a magazine wouldn't have for example you know so so i'm happy about it that's yeah, fantastic work we thank hope that it will continue i hope so thanks <laughs> So what do you have coming up next that you're looking forward to? I know you, right, right now you're doing your Postino for the next, I guess, a uh, couple of weeks. Yeah, really. yeah, yeah. The What's last coming up after that? The last one's the 16th of October. And then after that, I actually have two weeks off, which is really great because I've been working like crazy on this show. I also did um, a concert, little little baby of mine that I had been working on for a while. Uh, just a couple of days ago, actually, uh, it's all Neapolitan songs. And it was with a guitar, an accordion, mandolin, bass, and percussion and me singing of course and and it was really it was so much fun uh, so anyway i have two weeks off um and then uh, i go to munich for some donotavios in, in munich then i have a, a concert tour with my wife and dmitry horostovsky um in russia in december where i think we do four or five concerts in different cities there and then in january the most important thing um that i you know, as far as artistically goes for me, um, I'm doing my first Romeo in Dallas. So I'm really excited about that. I love the French repertoire. I feel that it fits me very well. Um, and uh, I feel 
that I, I just can't wait to do it. I'm really excited about it. That's fantastic. Thanks. Well, we're looking forward to all the wonderful things you have planned. And, Thank you. And beyond that as well. So thank, thank you. you so much for your time. Yeah, it's a pleasure for me. Thank you. And good luck also with the uh, Icadence. It's really great. Thank you. Thank you.